Good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Davidson. I am the principal of the Freshman Academy here at Danbury High School. I'm joined uh, by Dr. Roy, our DECO director. I don't know if you can see her or not, but when she starts speaking, you certainly will. And Mr. Salvestrini, our athletic director. Um, so what are we here for tonight? First of all, I want to talk about the Freshman Academy. What is it? Why is it there? How is it different from the rest of Danbury High School? And how is it different from, from the middle school you may be used to? I want to talk about registration. What do you need to do to get the classes that you want for your ninth grade year? I want to talk a little bit about the supports and extensions that are available to our students. Dr. Roy is going to talk about the Danbury Early College opportunity. Mr. Salvestrini is going to quickly talk about athletics. I have a quick PTO plug in there because they asked me. And then um, we're going to talk about what's next in the process and then take some questions at the end. Uh, throughout the presentation, if you take your phone or any device that you may have and you scan that QR code, it's on the corner of, of every one of our slides, you can enter a question into our form and we'll, we'll answer those questions at the end as we go. So the Freshman Academy, what is it? Our Freshman Academy was put in place several years ago to help ease the transition from ninth grade or from eighth grade to ninth grade. We found that our freshmen really struggled um, with the, res the new responsibilities, with the new freedoms that come along with high school. So we put some supports in place to help them transition a little more effectively from eighth grade to ninth grade. Um, it's a teamed approach. So we have eight teams of freshman academy teachers. We offer college prep and honors courses in those, in those teams. Our counselors are tied to a team similar to the, to the way they are in, in middle school. Our teachers have common planning time with other members of their team. And um, the Freshman Academy really allows us to, to offer some additional supports only to freshmen that the other uh, students at Denver High School don't have access to. Um, our new Freshman Academy started in the 1819 school year, brand new building in the back of our D building. It's actually a really, really beautiful place to, to be. We have 26 new classrooms there, six state-of-the-art science labs. We have a gym down on the bottom floor with um, outstanding locker rooms. Probably the coolest thing, um, literally and figuratively, is, is the air conditioning because it gets really, really hot at Danbury High School early in the school year and late in the school year. So air conditioned G building is, is outstanding for everyone who gets to enjoy it. Um, our G building, most ninth graders will spend three out of four of their core classes. So maybe they'll have English, math, science, in G building and social studies out, out of G building. So three quarters of their core classes will be spent in, in the new building and one quarter core class outside of the new building. So we try to make it equitable so everyone gets to experience that, but uh, we just didn't have enough room. We have you know, eight teams of four teachers, doesn't equal 26, you can, you can all do the math. A little too small. So that's what it looks like. You can see our science labs um, with the, the big science benches. It looks a lot different now. In, in COVID times, but that's what it looks like in a normal school year. And I'm gonna give this presentation, um, praying that we have a more normal school year next year. So I'll show you all the pictures of what it's supposed to look like. So absolutely outstanding views, the best views in the, in the entire school out the back of G building. Um, we have a really, really cool gym in the bottom that we use for wrestling and some other sports too. And we can do some, some small gatherings down there, which are fun. Just, just an awesome space that our freshmen really have enjoyed for the past couple of years. So credits, probably the most important thing to understand going into Danbury High School is our credit system. So students earn one half credit per class per semester. So for English class semester one, you earn a half credit. For English class semester two, you earn a half credit. Um, if you pass that class with a 65 or better, you earn credit. So I don't want to say you earn credit just by going to the class but you have to actually earn the credit by scoring 65 or better. And the way that works is for semester one, uh, quarter one and quarter two are averaged together. And if that average equals 65 or better, you get your half credit for that class. Semester two is the same way. The big difference between high school and middle school is if you don't pass, you, uh, you don't get credit and you, you don't move on. So in middle school, if, if you're in math class in seventh grade and um, you know, it, it's tough for you and maybe, maybe you don't pass the class, you're probably going to be in eighth grade math next year, but not at Danbury High School. If you fail Algebra 1, you have to take Algebra 1 again. And if you fail Algebra 1 a second time, you'll have to take it a third time, which is going to put you in some, some real jeopardy of graduating on time. So it's immensely important that you understand that these credits all add up 
to the 25 that we need in order to graduate. Now, from freshman to sophomore year, you need six credits. So when you accumulate six credits after your freshman year, you're officially a sophomore. So if you don't, it doesn't necessarily mean that you, you know, you're left behind without your class, but um, in power school, it's not gonna show you as a 10th grader. Um, you will need to, to get back on track you know, in order to accumulate enough credits to graduate in time, not the end of the world. Some students you know, may have five and a half at the end there, but, but our goal is six so that you can be matriculated to sophomore year on time. So I talked about those 25 credits and, and it's like a big jigsaw puzzle. All those 25 credits have to add up in the right way to get to that 25. Um, all students at Danbury High School must get four English credits. So four full years of English, English one, two, three, and then English four or an AP class. And we have AP Lit and AP Lang that could supplement or take place of um, English three or English four. You need three and a half social studies credits. Those must include world studies, modern world, US history, civics, and you can put an AP class in there too. You need one fine art credit. Could come from art, music, or theater arts, but you have to earn one credit of fine art in order to graduate. You have one elective credit that fits in that humanities, could be any one of those humanities courses um, to, make, to satisfy that. Science, technology, engineering, and math. You need, throughout your career at Danbury High, you need to get nine. STEM credits, four from math, three from science, including bio and chem, and two STEM elective credits. I'll talk about the elective credits in a few minutes. Uh, career and life skills, you need a health credit. You have to take health or you can't graduate to Embry High School. You have to take a full credit of PE, so two half years of phys ed in order to graduate, one career and life skills elective, and you need a personal finance um, credit as well. World language one full year world language. We recommend more than that. Um, you can talk to your school counselor or your son or daughter school counselor to talk about different college opportunities, but, but most colleges like to usually three years of, of world language. We only require one at Denver High School. We have a mastery-based diploma assessment. Don't worry too much about that. That's embedded in your classes as you go through Denver High School. So don't think, oh my God, I never signed up for this mastery-based diploma assessment. It's embedded in there, I promise you will show that you've, uh, you've shown mastery throughout the year, throughout the years of Danbury High. And you have a student choice for 1.0 to equal that whole 25 that you need. So I know that's kind of confusing and, and giving all those different criteria make, may make you a little scared, but here's what you need to know um, going into freshman year. So you have some choices to make, but not a whole ton of choices. We have a fairly prescribed um, course sequence, especially for freshmen. But what you do get to decide is whether you're gonna take college prep or you're gonna take honors level courses. Now, one of the things that we make freshmen do is whatever they choose in English for that level, college prep or honors, they have to choose in social studies. So if you take college prep English, you have to take college prep social studies. If you take honors English, you have to take honors social studies. Now, the same thing is true for math and science. If you take honors math, you have to take honors science, college prep math, college prep science. You could do college prep in English and social studies, and then you could do honors in math and science, but in, inside those boxes on the screen, in the blue box, you have to choose the same level for those, and in the orange box, you have to choose the same level for those. I'll talk a little bit about college prep and honors, what the difference is next. But um, freshmen may be required to take um, a reading or a math lab for additional supports, depending on you know, their, their background and their skills coming into high school. Uh, we recommend that all freshmen take health and phys ed to kind of get that ball rolling, get it out of the way early so you can start taking some more electives as you become an upperclassman. And a limited selection of electives, which you'll see on our next screen after this. Um, but the big choice really is, is college prep versus honors. And people always ask, what's the difference? Um, college prep is going to prepare you to go to college. You will learn all the content that you need to be successful when you go to college if you choose to go. So we're preparing you to, to be successful in college. Honors, you're gonna learn the same things. You're gonna cover the same content in all your classes, but you're gonna be asked to do a little more with that content. We're gonna ask you to, um, to go a little deeper, to do more work outside of class. Um, the honors level courses are more rigorous and require our students to, to really take a little bit more of the ownership of their learning outside of the classroom. So those are the two differences. 
two differences between college prep and honors. If you're stuck, give your middle school counselor a call. Send us an email if you, if you really want some, some our opinion, and, and we can help you choose the best one. Now, whatever you choose for college prep and honors right now, you, you don't have to stay there for the entire year. So when you come to Danbury High and you say, wow, I totally should have taken, should have taken an honors class because this college prep is too easy for me. Uh, during the first two weeks of school, the first 10 days of school, you can make schedule changes and move those levels. So it's not set in stone. So do your best guess right now to decide what's most appropriate for your son or daughter or for you if you're, a, if you're an incoming freshman, um, but, but it's not set in stone. You have, you have some wiggle room when you get, when you get here in the fall. I could spend two hours just going over what's taught in all those classes, but we don't have that much time. So if you're curious about what's happening in, in English one, or you wanna know what's going on in, um, in world studies, check out those, those other tables that the department heads are doing and they can answer those specific questions. And if you, you, know, you don't have time to go there, send them an email or send me an email and we can answer those specific questions as we, as we go along. Uh, so the electives. So outside of those core classes, we offer opportunities for students to take um, elective classes in ROTC. We have several art classes they can take. These are only available to freshmen. There's more when they become sophomores, juniors, and seniors, but this is the freshman elective schedule. Business courses are out there, family consumer science. We have uh, a pretty wide selection of music courses you can take, full and half year elective choices. Um, we have electives in science outside of traditional biology, um, technology education. We have some, some theater arts classes and our different world languages. So what might that look like when you're a freshman? So you may request all your classes and you get your schedule in power school in August and it looks something like this. So it says 1A college prep, English, 1B world studies, 2A you've got bio, 2B you have health and PE split between semester one and semester two. You have your algebra two honors 3A, you decided to take Spanish too because you're, you're pretty good in Spanish, you're pretty fluent, so you want the Spanish too. And during that fourth block, um, you have AP Computer Science Principles. So you may say, Mr. Davidson, what is going on with all these ones, twos, threes, and that one little weird four on the bottom? So the way things work at Danbury High, we do not have a straight AB schedule. I wish we did, but unfortunately we do not. Blocks one, two, and three meet every other day. So 1A, 2A, 3A is gonna meet, say, on Monday. And 1B, 2B, 3B is going to meet on Tuesday the next day. Now that fourth block class, it's shorter, but it meets every day. So on an A day, you're going to go to 1A, 2A, 3A, and 4AB. On a B day, 1B, 2B, 3B, and 4AB. So it's a shortened class. It's half the amount of time as a normal block class, but it meets every single day. So for you people that like to see a nice little chart of what your week would look like, those are those same classes in a sample freshman schedule here, A days, B days. We'll see it repeats, alternating as we go, A day, B day, A day, B day, A day. And you'll see that fourth block is, is half the time of all the other blocks. And there's this weird little thing called flex in the middle. Um, I have a slide specifically about flex, but flex is a pretty cool thing that we have that we put in place to help our students um, be more successful than they've already been or to really expand themselves outside of their comfort zone further than they've done in the past. So flex is dedicated time. We embed it in the middle of the day and on Monday, every student goes to their mentor flex and they design what they're gonna do for the rest of the week. And that schedule is individualized. So if I have a test coming up on Thursday, I may schedule to go see the teacher who the, you know, who's giving the test on Wednesday so I feel prepared, I have a little extra study session. If I miss class on Monday, or I missed class on uh, last Friday, I'm gonna schedule Tuesday to go see a teacher that maybe I missed an assignment in. So you have the opportunity as a freshman in flex to schedule your week during that flex time to meet your needs. Could be interventions, could be things that you need help with, right? Things that you didn't feel comfortable about, things that you just need a little extra support. It may be interventions. We have a whole lot of interventions that we embed into flex for, for people that maybe they just don't need support that week or maybe they don't need support on Thursday, so they're going to do an enrichment activity. We've done uh, tire change Tuesdays where you can go out to the auto shop and learn how to change a tire. We've done yoga where we go down and, and Ms. Lewis runs yoga classes. I do a SIDXO um, um, lunch bunch where students are 
are involved in the decision making through the Sodexo company um, for our school lunch. So they get to taste test a whole bunch of different things from different products from different representatives and decide what really works for, for our cafeteria. So we have a whole bunch of different things that, that really fit the needs of our students, be it enrichment or interventions. Um, everyone has flex. So if your freshman tells you, I don't have flex, they're not telling you the truth. Everyone has flex every day. So remember that parents, don't let them pull that over on you because it's not true. So how do we choose all these classes? That's really the next step in, in, in this battle. Um, the first thing you should probably do is check out our course of study guide. It's linked right from our, from our website. We have English, Spanish, and Portuguese versions. Um, take a look at those courses. It'll tell you a little bit about each one, maybe what's in there, or what's available, um, what's the progression in different departments to get an idea as to what you wanna, you wanna take as a freshman and beyond. Registration is super simple. If you've been in Danbury Public Schools before, you have a PowerSchool account, you log into your PowerSchool account, and just like you've probably done for the past three years, you click on class registration. Inside of class registration, uh, we allow you to request classes. So you can request an English class. I want College Prep English 1. So I click on the little pencil and I choose College Prep English 1. I do the same thing for social studies. I do the same thing for math and science. Uh, make sure, because we are a semesterized school, that you're choosing semester 1 and semester 2. Otherwise, it's a lot of cleanup for our counselors and for myself. So that makes my life a lot easier if you make sure you check off semester one and semester two, click OK for all your core classes. You do the same thing for your elective classes, but you don't have to choose all of them. So you don't have to choose a full year and a half year art, ROTC, business, but you can if you want to. So whatever you want in your schedule, you can make a request for those classes um, to be built into your schedule when we do, when we do build those. Scheduling notes. And this is really important. Requests don't equal registrations. So if I request American Sign Language, because I really want to take that for, for my world language, it doesn't mean I'm going to get that. It means that I requested it, but it doesn't mean that you're going to end up there. There's a good chance you will, but it's not 100%, you know, I requested it, I'm going to get it. So the way it works is we take all those requests and we figure out what courses all of our teachers need to teach. We build the schedule and then we load students in there. So if there's more requests or if a certain request doesn't fit into your schedule, it, it doesn't fit into your schedule and you won't see it there. But we do a decent job of, of getting everyone's requests um, into those schedules. If you're confused, like I said before, and you, and you want some, some, some help from your school counselor, ask them. They're usually pretty in tune with, with the requirements for college prep and for honors, and they can give you, you know, a, a good scenario as to what they think you should do. Again, it's your decision. We don't force students to take honors or college prep. It's a school of choice. And if, if you want to take college prep or honors, you sign up for it. Um, so you can get people's opinions, but, it, but it's your choice in the end of the day. If your student receives special education services, um, still submit your requests, but just know when you have your transitional PPT, um, you'll, you'll kind of take a look at those requests and make sure it works out with your IEP. So. Um, so go ahead and submit what you want. It'll help that transition PPT run a little better or maybe at least get an idea as to what you want to take. Um, registration closes 319, so we don't have forever, but we have a few weeks. I imagine most of them we get done in the first two. <coughs> Excuse me. What's available um, when students struggle? And students do struggle. That transition to high school is, is not always easy. We have a lot of supports in place that make our freshman academy kind of that intermediary ground between middle school and high school. We have uh, intensive reading and math intervention programs to support our students to help build those skills so that they can um, build those skills and be ready for sophomore year in reading and math. I, I spoke about flex time. We have directed study hall. So maybe a regular study hall doesn't work out for you. I run directed study halls. So probably the last place you want to end up, but it's the right place for some kids. They need that structure of up in my study hall, so we do that. Um, we run an after-school tutoring program, usually two days a week, and outside from this year, we do provide transportation home. So you you know you can you can take the bus to an elementary school nearest your house two days a week. We run a twilight program, so if a freshman were to fail a first semester course, and I already spoke about how important it is to matriculate on time and and earn all those credits that you can, but for some reason it doesn't happen. 
we offer an opportunity for the right situation where a student can retake the first semester course after school during the second semester. So while they're taking the second semester in English one, they're repeating the first semester so that they can get those six credits and matriculate on time. And again, we provide transportation for that. We have a credit recovery program, which is more self-paced. It's not taught in a blended style like our Twilight program. Um, it, it's more computerized and, and students move along at their own pace and that's available in the future. And we have a pretty good SRBI intervention process um, to, to look at um, what interventions we can put in place to help students in, in an individualized capacity as we go. So what if I don't need any supports? What if I'm doing a great job and I kind of, I'm, I'm cruising through freshman year? Well, then, then challenge yourself. I always, I always challenge our students when I go down and talk to them in middle school. I say, be more than just a student. Don't just come here and, and learn. Come here and, and give back to, to the Danbury High community. Be involved in more than just classes. And you can do that by taking one of our 23 advanced placement courses. 19% of our kids take AP classes. 52% um, of our minority students, which is, which is outstanding, and 32% of those kids who receive free and reduced lunch. But 19% of our kids take a shot at an AP class, and many of them take, take several. The best thing about AP courses, aside from um, exposing students to that, that rigorous college-type curriculum, is if you pass with a three, four, or five, you can take that score and you can earn credit in college when you do go there. So that's a really good opportunity to save mom and dad some money and also get a head start on college so you can you know, get some of those introductory courses out of the way. Um, flex, like I said, extensions and enrichment opportunities outside of interventions. Dr. Roy, in a couple of seconds, is gonna talk about the early college opportunity. We have a whole bunch of honor societies. So if you're really interested in art, we have the largest art honor society in the state. Um, so great opportunity to be with like-minded students that share the same passion as you and really allow you to stretch your stretch yourself. Accelerated summer courses, if you wanted to take geometry over the summers to get it out of the way so you can jump into a higher math class, certainly an opportunity over the summer. We have a CONCAP upward bound program that, that you can get some information on. A um, whole lot of athletics that Mr. Salvestrini will talk about. I think there's just about an activity for everyone at Danbury High School between athletics, clubs, and classes. There's something for everyone here. It's just going out there and finding it and kind of taking the bulls by the horn, taking a bull, the bull by the horns. Um, again, I, I challenge kids to be more than just a student. I want them to, to be kind of ingrained in the Danbury High community. So that's my challenge to them. Dr. Roy, a little bit about the DECO program. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the Danbury Early College Opportunity is a partnership with Naugatuck Valley Community College and Oak Branch, which is a local industry. They do capital management here in Danbury. And it is a program where students are able to work on a degree in computer science at Naugatuck Valley Community College, an associate degree, um, while they're here at the high school. So students are duly enrolled beginning their sophomore year at the college and at the high school. The backbone of this um, program really is to get students ready for the workplace. So we have a series of classes called workplace learning where students learn the professional skills needed to be successful in any job that they go to. Um, they'll also begin their sophomore year with an intro to computers course at the college to say, hey, I can do some college level work. Um, this is offered to the students at no charge. So this opportunity is um, very unique. There are only four programs like this in the state. And so I encourage students who would like to learn more about it to um, apply for our lottery. The lottery is posted on the Danbury High School website. It did open today. It is also posted on the Danbury Early College Opportunity website. So if you go to the Danbury High School homepage, scroll down, you'll see some blue buttons. One of them says DECO. Uh, if you click on that, that will open up our website and give you lots of information. We are also on um, Twitter and we are on um, Instagram and Facebook. So we have lots of information out there for you. Um, but basically the big difference for freshmen is that they would have one of their electives be a workplace learning course. And so that would take up one full elective. 
Uh, our freshmen also get the opportunity in the past, <laughs> we've been able to pre-COVID uh, have students come into the building early and kind of get to do some getting to know you and team building activities. We do scavenger hunts, we travel around the building, get to see the building. Um, one of the benefits of the DECA program is that I do work with the students throughout their time at the high school. So I do work uh, with ninth through 12th graders. And then I also keep in touch with many of those who go on to college as well. Um, one other benefit of the program is that we do have industry mentors along the way um, who provide students with, you know, relevant guidance and um, um, advice as they enter their first jobs. I think that's about it. So for more information, you can check out our website again. Uh, that's my phone number at school. Welcome to call me if you'd like to speak personally or you can email me anytime. Thanks, Thank you, Dr. Ryan. Appreciate it. Next, Mr. Salvestrini is going to talk a little bit about athletics, what you need to do to be ready to hit the ground running or hit the field running, whatever it may be, with athletics in the fall. Thank you, Mr. Davison. Um, we we have a we have a, a very big program, and Mr. Davison mentioned a couple times about adjusting to high school as your freshman academy. Freshman sports for us is a, a lot. It kind of mirrors that a little bit, getting our young people to make the transition from middle school activities, youth sports, and come into the high school and develop a, a plan for themselves as athletes at Danbury High School. Generally, uh, we look at freshman sports as a opportunity for young people to learn about the high school. Um, a lot of kids involved, especially at freshman year, we have somewhere uh, in a normal year, we would have upwards of three to 350 to 400 freshmen in, in the first year just to get involved with, with athletics. The tenor of our program is about responsibility. This is at the freshman level. We, we set the foundation for the, for the four years. Re responsibility, we have character in, in themselves, respecting one another, their coaches and their teachers, and balancing athletics with academics. Uh, we'll tell, first, First time we'll say it publicly to this group, uh, you need to compete in the classroom before you compete in the athletic field. You need to handle yourself as a solid young citizen in the school, in the hallways, before you compete as a Danbury High School athlete. So we look to mirror both programs together. Now, the goal of our program is to conduct a wholesome and worthwhile activity, which is consistent to the uh, basic philosophy of Danbury Public Schools. That's, a, that's our goal. Uh, participation in athletics at Danbury is a, is a privilege. It's not a right. So it carries the expectation that a student uh, will behave in a responsible manner anytime they wear the, the orange and blue. In 2020-21, again, this is a, a little bit of an odd year for us as we're working through the COVID, but uh, normally we will field 62 teams in 25 different sports. Uh, we have 29 varsity, 22 JV, 11 freshman teams. So for freshmen out there, uh, this fall we have cheerleading, cross country, field hockey, football, soccer, swimming, and volleyball. Plenty of things to choose from. Plenty to choose from. Uh, parents, which most important is physical exams. Uh, it's a requirement at Embry Public Schools that a physical exam is updated in order to participate. So the exam must in, encompass the entire athletic season. So as an example, if freshman sports begins on September 1 and ends on November 1, the athletic physical must encompass that time or the student athlete will not be eligible to participate. So it's important that you start thinking about getting a physical uh, because when we get to the summertime, it gets awful tough uh, to get physical scheduled on time. Uh, next up, we have... Um, we talk a little bit about the family ID. Family ID is where we uh, do all our um, permission forms. It's all online and parents can go in and register their child for a sport. Uh, for family ID for the fall will open up on June 1. So you can't, re you can't register before that, but June 1 through the three weeks in June there while we're in school, uh, you can register. We'll be there to answer questions. We'll have all our coaches available to answer questions for you. We'll do that even now. But for as far as registering for a sport, it would be June 1 uh, for, a fall, for a fall sport. 
If you use, you should use, get you familiar with the website. You go to the Danbury High School website. There's an athletic link there and you have everything there in front of you. You've got eligibility, coaches, the forms you need, uh, general information, the Hall of Fame, handbook, mission statement, everything is there. Also there is a family ID and it's pretty, as we only have three or four items listed on, 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 this, on my little uh, speech here tonight. Uh, but our program is your, your, huge, and we really focus in on the medical eligibility right now, family ID, and in communication. Um, I'll be happy to answer questions. Uh, I can be contacted by email, phone. Uh, everything's up on the website. Uh, my phone number, uh, my secretary's phone number. We have two full-time trainers that manage the injuries for our athletes. So we have a great base program for all the incoming freshmen who would like to get involved, compete, be good people, build character, and, and develop a program so we can beat Richfield every, every year in every sport. Okay? So um, I wish you good luck. If you have any questions, please certainly give us a call. Mr. Thank Davidson? You, Mr. Appreciate it. Uh, we do have some outstanding athletics programs here at, at Danbury High. Um, but like Mr. Salvestrini said, you have to get it done in the classroom before you can get it done on the athletic field. So um, focusing on your academics first is, is something we always preach to our freshmen. And sometimes, you know, they, they learn a little too late when they come out and that average is just a little below what it needs to be and they can't participate. So I don't want that to happen to anybody because it's sad. So Denver High PTO asked me to, to give a little plug for them. Um, they're an outstanding organization that, that does things to, to support us in any way that they can. So if that's something you're interested in, if you were involved in PTO in, in elementary school and middle school and you want to reach out to them, feel free. I'm sure they'd love any support you can give them. I know they, they have the Amazon Smile thing, so if you frequently shop on Amazon, a little bit can get kicked back to them through Amazon Smile, um, Stop and Shop Rewards. And they're also constantly selling masks and, and magnets. So if you contact the PTO, you can, you can take advantage of any of those opportunities. So our registration schedule, I don't know where my check mark went. We, we spent three Wednesdays this month going and speaking to the middle school students to allow them to ask questions. I give them a similar presentation, but not exactly the same um, so that they can get a, get a feel for what high school is gonna be like. Tonight, we had opportunity for parents to join along too. Online registration opens tonight. That's really important to know. In a couple of weeks, we'll do a, a private school. So our non-public schools, private parochial schools, will get a similar info share. Um, they can't go into power school and register. So we have to do something a little different for them in order to get their course requests. When the window closes on 319, so when everyone's requested their classes, um, we send them back to our students. Our counselors take a look at them and we make sure that it's exactly what students wanted to request. When we hit June and school's over, that's when uh, we figure out what classes we need, what every teacher is going to teach. Uh, we, we set the, the caps, we build the schedule, and then in July, we, we load the students in. So once the students all go in there and schedules are finalized, we open up power schools so students can see their schedules. So you may say, why does it take till July? I promise you, it takes till July. There's a whole lot of moving parts. We have 3,200 kids to fit into all these different um, sections that teachers teach, and we have to make sure it fits in the building and, and, and throughout the process. So it's a lot of work. Um, so be patient. You will get your schedule, I promise. And what we typically do is we invite incoming freshmen in uh, the week before school opens. And, and like I said before, I'm giving this presentation thinking that things are going to be a little more back to normal. Um, so they may not be the same size tours we typically allow, but, but I, I want to do tours because I think it's important for freshmen to get in here and see what the building's like. So the first day is not completely overwhelming for them. So they say, you know what? I do remember this hallway and I may not know where my English class is, but I know it's somewhere down here and it makes it a little bit easier. So that's something we're, we're, we're hopefully going to be able to do. Um, so if you have individual questions, you want to contact any of the three of us, um, here's our contact information. I'll leave that up. Now, if I wasn't clear before on how to, how to ask questions, because we have, we have a decent amount of questions, but, um, your children asked way more questions than you guys did. There was hundreds and hundreds of questions asked in the middle schools and you guys aren't, aren't quite there yet. So if you take your camera, any camera, and you scan it over that QR code in the bottom right, you'll get the form where you can ask questions. And so if I didn't, if I wasn't clear on that, I'm sorry. It took me a while to learn how to use those silly QR codes too. 
So questions we do have that came in. Um, my child's attending the fall semester. How many students are in a class? We build our classes, the majority of them, for 26. That's what, what we put. We put a cap of 26 on almost all of the, the classes that, that we load and build in our schedule. There's some that that doesn't work because 26 seats can't fit in a particular class, like food and nutrition. They only have 24 seats or a computer class, you know, doesn't have enough seats for that. But the majority of them, like I said, is, is 26. So that's our, that's our average. And that's where most of our classes fall. Freshman classes might be a, a little bit smaller depending on how many teams we run and, and how many kids are in each team. But for the majority of cases, 26 is our magic number. Do you need to have 25 credits each semester or by the end of the year? Neither, actually, 25 for the, your whole career. Your goal at the end of freshman year is six. Six at the end of freshman year, 25 in order to graduate. Uh, what grade do you have to get to pass all classes? You need to average 65 to get credit. Obviously, we want you to do better than that. If, if, if you go through your high school career and you have hundreds across the board, that's fantastic but you need a 65 average between the two quarters of the semester to gain credit for that semester. Uh, a lot of grading questions. Um, if you dip down below a 65 for a class, but then you get your grade back up, do you still get credit? Yeah. So it's whatever your grade is when the quarter closes. So if the quarter closes on um, January 27th, whatever your grade is on that day when it closes, that's the grade you're going to get. That's going to be averaged with the previous quarter to give you your semester grade. And if those two average to 65 or better, then you get credit. Um, if my child picks college prep, but she's able to switch to honors because college prep is not challenging enough, absolutely. We allow schedule changes in the first two weeks of the semester. For a half year course, we allow it in the second semester too, but the first two weeks in which you're in the class, you're allowed to, to change your schedule. It could be, you know, I, I chose a selective and it, it's not for me. It could be I chose the wrong level in one of my core classes, but we can make schedule changes so long as, as, as they work and they fit. Given your current schedule, our counselors will make our, their best effort to, to make it work. Um, if you're in Algebra 1 in eighth grade, do you immediately go to Algebra 2? Almost all the time, but, but not, not every time. So it's your choice. The majority of students in middle school who, who take Algebra 1 take Algebra 2 when they come to high school, but we've had some that didn't feel ready for Algebra 2, so they took Algebra 1 again. Again, you didn't get credits in middle school, so uh, you, you can pretty much take what you want, but the vast majority of the time, however, you know, they ended in middle school, they take the, the next class logically in math especially. Um, is it better to take college prep or honors for colleges? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I think it's important that you challenge yourself and you do the best you possibly can at whatever level you choose. Um, in colleges, we'll, we'll see this student work, works hard. This student, you know, puts in a good effort in, in all the classes that they take. And I think that's what, what colleges are looking for. They're not looking for someone who's going to take college prep classes because they're easier or honors classes because they're harder. They want someone that, you know, it's right at the right level and, and challenges themselves and is a well-rounded student. How do I figure out who my child's counselor is? Excellent question. Um, you won't really find out uh, until we release the schedules. The way our freshman transition counselors work, counselors are assigned to different teams. So teams one, two, and four have Ms. Zondek. Teams five, six, and seven have Ms. Harris. And teams three and eight have uh, Ms. Rodriguez. So you in power school will show who your counselor is, but that's how we decide who your counselor is in ninth grade, depending on which freshman academy team you're in. Um, so we need six credits as a freshman and we need 25 at the end of 12th grade. Yes, nailed it. Do we need a full year of gym or is it split between two years? Uh, typically we have a freshman take um, one semester of, of PE their freshman year and then another semester sophomore year. If you really wanted to, you could double up freshman year, but we do like um, all sophomores to take PE too. So that's the traditional thing that, that we do a half year freshman year and a half year sophomore year uh, for phys ed. What happens if a selected course is not available? Which gets me back to, um, you, we request classes. We don't necessarily register for them. So if that course is not available for some reason, maybe 
Um, the way that registration works is we take all the requests and then when we load students, we load seniors first and then juniors and then sophomores and unfortunately freshmen last. And the reason we do that is because freshmen have three more years after that to get the courses they want and seniors probably need it this year in order to graduate. So if a whole bunch of seniors really wanted American Sign Language and freshmen did too, there's a good chance the freshmen may get bumped out of it because we run one section and the seniors fill it up before everyone else. We did have some freshmen in there this year, so there's hope. But um, again, the upperclassmen, we load them first, freshmen after that. Um, selected classes, it shows 14 and two additional. Is that normal? Um, I don't know what that means. It could be in the online registration. Um, I'm not sure about that one, but if you want to send me an email, I can, I can help you troubleshoot the online registration. Um, is it better to take college prep or honors? Again, whatever you want to do. Uh, if you take algebra one in middle school, does that transfer uh, to math credits in high school? No, because you're going to take algebra two, then you're going to take geometry, and then you're going to go take some more advanced math classes um, on your way to the math classes you need in order to graduate Danbury High. So the algebra one class, you will not get credit. You don't come to Danbury High with credits from middle school. Uh, will freshmen be in the same classes as 11th and 12th graders? Usually no, definitely not in a core class. Our freshman academy classes, um, English, math, science, social studies, all freshmen. It's possible if you take an elective, you could have an upperclassman in there. Absolutely. Probably not in PE or health, but very possible if you took like uh, an acting class or food nutrition, it's very possible that, that you could have a class with an upperclassman as well. Um, Will the school have all in-class students in the fall semester? I sure hope so. Um, I, I can't answer that for sure, but I think we're, we're moving in the right direction. As you know, we're, we're increasing Wednesdays. Our students are going to be coming back. So I think that's as part of the, the process of moving back to a little more normalcy. But my goal and, and my vision is that we'll be back in, in school the way that we used to starting next fall. And I hope that happens. We have time for about two more questions. Um, what's the ratio, student ratio, or what's the ratio of student to counselor? Our counselors have uh, mid 200s, two, 250 to 275, I believe, is, is what they, they average between their teams in the freshman academy. Um, I would love to have more counselors. And Dr. Sal's listening, that would be awesome. More counselors. If a requested class is not available, should you be notified and have the option to select something else? Uh, no, but we do allow you to choose alternates. So when you're registering for classes, you'll choose the classes you want to take and then alternate electives. Say uh, two or three things that you may want to go into if one of your classes is not available. And Power School is smart enough to say, oh, you know what, that class isn't available, go choose one from the electives bucket and we'll fill out your schedule. If it doesn't work out there, we still have time. Uh, you can meet with counselors before school starts. We have opportunities to make schedule changes. And like I said, in the first two weeks, you can also meet with school counselors to get your schedule adjusted. So every student, we're, we're confident we'll get uh, the schedule you know, that they want that fits by the time they, they show up here at Danbury High. Okay, I think that's all our questions and I think that's all our time. 645, so you can move on to the rest of the agenda. Thank you all for your time tonight. If there's a question I didn't answer or something I said that confused you, I apologize. Um, please reach out, uh, I'll do my best to correct it and get you pointed in the right direction. I'm really excited for everyone to, to be here in the fall. Um, so go out there, register for those classes, enjoy the last few months of, of eighth grade and come ready to, to be a part of the Danbury High community and give back and be more than just a student. That's my challenge to all of you. So thank you. Appreciate it.